Hey there, Ben Zebelman here. Um, wanted to share with you some uh, cool uh, aspects in Digital Performer of kind of wrangling the Digital Performer mixer. One of the great things about the Digital Performer is it has incredible flexibility in nearly every aspect of the uh, program's functions. But with that, sometimes comes that things can be so loose you can't always understand like why does a window open when I double click on it here and why does it open on this display in my case I have three displays so I'm always trying to get a better understanding as to why a window opens where it does or what size it is when it opens one of those windows is the mixer window if sometimes the mixer ends up here or here or here or sometimes you know it's like a little bit out of place and you know just in the course of the day option clicking on the the green uh mac os button here it gets kind of annoying and uh, a couple months ago as i've gotten a little more experience with keyboard maestro i figured hey there's probably a way to um bring the mixer window under my control and i was correct and what i did is i uh made a keyboard maestro macro uh looking for the same shortcut key that I use in Digital Performer, Shift-M. So when I hit Shift-M, now that's triggering a keyboard maestro macro that um, fires off the command Shift-M, and then a move and resize window with the name containing mixing board, because Digital Performer always has the word mixing board, colon, and then the name of the chunk that you're working on. So as long as the word mixing board is there, it's gonna do this. And I basically took a little trial and error, it took like five minutes of figuring out how to get it to park itself in the upper left-hand corner and then drag itself out so that it perfectly occupies the width of my uh, second display here and then get the right height. So that's been great for a bunch of weeks. So, you know, even if the monitor is like, let's just really mess it up here and you'll see there's sort of two steps to it when it resizes itself. Let's do something really funky here. Okay, that's kind of weird, right? So if I hit Shift M, watch, it's gonna relocate itself up here and then about a half second later, you'll see sort of a second function happen and that's the move and resize window uh, custom command that I have coming from Keyboard Maestro. So here we go, Shift M, here we go. And then boom, right? Every time. And I'm very happy about this. Flash forward about a month, uh, the Raven 4.0 software comes out, and I'm really excited to get to using that. I have been using it. They have this fantastic, um, gosh, I don't know the correct term, but let's just call it a control bar. Uh, that's always here when you have the Slate Classic Mixer open, and you can assign views that you wanna use uh, so that when you push these, uh, they're meant to be, you know, track uh, layouts that you've customized for each session. And uh, if you watch uh, Jamie's fantastic tutorials, you know, there's like a two-step process for how to quickly reprogram these into Digital Performer and have them get set up through the um, commands window in Digital Performer so that, you know, you have a session where, you know, you're doing drums or vocals or guitars, you know, you're going to have different sorts of things. Um, I sort of have this set up for my template that I use in Digital Performer for the film and TV scoring stuff that I do. And um, I had to customize these a little bit um, because I also wanted to have that Shift M command go out um, because I've gotten so used to that to, to maintain the integrity of the location of the mixer. So. What I had to do at first, I was like, all right, so I'm gonna click and hold on this button and then I'm gonna adjust the batch command and have it put in the correct track layout. And I put Shift M in for the first step and it wasn't working because Keyboard Maestro needs to see Shift M coming from the actual physical keyboard of the computer, um, you know, the Mac keyboard. And when you put Shift M here, uh, the way the Raven is working is it has, I guess, some kind of you know direct connection into the uh, the program, Digital Performer in this case, to provide the command which bypasses uh, the Raven. So I uh, thought about it for about a minute, and that's when I first discovered the MIDI messages 
of all kinds that you can program into your macros. And um, so I put in a MIDI note on C sharp minus two on channel MIDI channel 16 and edited my keyboard maestro macro for the digital performer mixer. So here's the original shift M, right? And then I added a second uh, hot key trigger and it's that note, which they call note number one, on channel 16 from Slate MIDI. So I can trigger now this macro from either place. So when I push any of these buttons here, these nice colored buttons, they first fire off uh, the command to Keyboard Maestro, which does its thing, and then the um, Raven then fires off the uh, layout pertaining to um, the buttons. And so I don't have these layout buttons having anything to do with my tracks overview or, or the sequences editor. I want these to be only about the mixer because that's what works for me. So we can first, I'll show you how they work with the digital performer mixer. I'll just hit the strings button and you'll see all my uh, red tracks come up that are specific to strings. Boom. And these are just the audio tracks. These are my returns from... Vienna Ensemble Pro, there's no MIDI here. Uh, I can go to like my winds, which are gonna be blue, right? And then here's my overview back to Aux's mixer. That's all my returns, unfiltered. And that's everything coming back from Vienna Ensemble Pro. Pretty cool, right? This also, of course, updates because I'm set up in the control surface setup with Digital Performer, pinned to mixer. So I'm not pinned to focus window because then otherwise this mixer would be changing based on if I you know clicked in the tracks overview window, it'll be constantly readjusting. I just want this to be stationary in total lockstep with Digital Performer because I don't always have this up when I'm composing. And for me, composing, producing, mixing is all happening at the same time. I'll have pretty much just the Digital Performer mixer open because I want to be adding you know various plugins to all these channels and everything. But when it comes down to like really mixing, automating you know string parts that's when i'll you know want to get in here i'll put it in strings and then here's like you know my um spitfire chamber strings pro violin one two viola um cello basses the ensemble sound um all my automation i can do from right here so I, I keep the channel strip for Digital Performer parked right here, though it doesn't have to be because the new version of the Raven with using the Mac Automator, it can go off screen to other displays to finish macros. So like you can see on the bottom here, to the right of the transport controls of the Raven, enable the automation recording by hitting this button and you'll see the mouse go whoop and do that. Or if I wanna go between touch mode, if I wanna go to latch mode, hit the latch button. And these are all, um, you know, macros that after watching the uh, Slate Raven 4 for digital performer instructional videos, I refined all this stuff and put back in touch. Um, and of course, if I need, you know, any of the other modes that digital performer provides, I would do that manually, but I really just use touch and latch. Those are really the only two that I'm ever bothering with, can turn off the automation. And, um, you know, we got the fine faders here, which you can turn on. And so these are just so fluid. I mean, I'm, I'm noticing such a difference in these compared to the Raven 3. And uh, I've already done a couple projects in the last week where it was just like a pleasure to come in here instead of, you know, doing it with the mouse, which, you know, works. But there's just something about using, you know, your whole hand or, you know, just grabbing a fader here and automating something. It just, it just feels for lack of a word, you know, more, more musical, uh, to me. And, um, that's kind of, uh, the main thing I wanted to show you here. Uh, of course, so a lot of these buttons are, are repeats from what I have going on my iPad where, um, where I've Metagrid Pro going, which I pretty much exclusively use, as you can see, um, for articulations, I got a nice XY pad, which interfaces with a lot of the uh, native instrument stuff. Um, and uh, different views down here that I use a lot, like the aux mixer one is there. I have a view for my stems, which I don't have in, um, in the Raven, just due to lack of uh, buttons. I'll probably put those also on the, um, what they call the matrix, which is their floating window. Um, 
and uh, I'll probably get around to that just to have them in more than one place. You know, I can show just my my reverb returns. You'll see the Raven update, right? There it goes. Okay, yeah, there's my reverbs. I can show just my stem tracks. Um, back to the aux mixer. And then, uh, of course, what's super helpful is if there's tracks that I want to add, I can just highlight them anywhere in Digital Performer, and then I have a selects to mixer. So whatever tracks I've selected, that's what gets opened in the mixer. And then, of course, the Raven mixer will instantly update because I am in pin to mixer mode. Um, so I will probably add most of those buttons because I operate those with my left hand. This uh, iPad with Metagrid Pro is to my left. The Raven's right in front of me. And I'll probably add those onto this floating matrix which is resizable because you know why not and uh when i say add i mean i'll have to recreate them because i think uh let me see i think most of these are going out through keyboard maestro right let's see menu items whoops what's going on here macro there we go aux mixer that is shift m that zoom yeah so that's a combination of um commands in Digital Performer, and then uh, it resizes the mixer. So actually, I'll be able to do that. Uh, the first two commands, I will uh, just replicate in um, the Raven batch commander, and then I'll add a, uh, a MIDI note out of the batch commander, just like I showed you a little while ago, to uh, fire off the last step. So anyways, it's cool to have lots of different places to touch things as long as it doesn't uh, confuse you. For me, I like having that stuff in sort of two spaces, one for my right hand, one for my left hand, and uh, it all works. So anyways, I hope this, uh, you found this helpful. Uh, like I said, I'm about uh, a week into using uh, the Raven 4, and uh, you know, every day it's just like instead of pushing through when there's, there are those re repetitive tasks that we all know that we do and we always tell ourselves you know someday i'm gonna figure out how to streamline there someday i'm gonna make a macro for that or this or that just do it and yeah it's a little bit of a speed bump it's gonna take you anywhere from you know seven minutes to seven hours you know because sometimes we run into those speed bumps when doing stuff like that but in the long run uh it's worth it to have you know a nice ergonomic streamlined setup uh that works for you so have a good one and i uh, will see you soon